Well, we had someone that wanted to know about a yellowwood tree. And this is a really nice example of a yellowwood. Um, yellowwoods are native to Kentucky and Tennessee and maybe a little corner of North Carolina. That's about it. You won't find them growing in the wild anywhere besides right around this general part of, of the states. Um, one of the reasons they're so popular is because about maybe two months ago, if you came by here, these would all be hanging flowers of white, very sweet smelling, um, looks like a white wisteria. Um, they're in the pea family, which means they're just, there's lots of plants that are um, in the same family that, that uh, garden peas are in, um, which m is important because anything in the pea family can fix its own nitrogen, which means you don't have to fertilize it. It has little nodules in the roots that can pull nitrogen from the air, which is really pretty cool. Um, but you can see that the flowers come out in these panicles at the very ends of the branches. Um, and this one is kind of interesting from, from an ID standpoint. Usually the buds on a leaf are um, beside the stem of the leaf. But this one, the ends of the, the leaves totally encompass the bud. So if we can pull this off, when you pull that off, the bud is revealed underneath that. So in the fall, when this whole uh, leaflet falls off, then the bud is revealed underneath there. Usually, though, the buds are, are separate than this, than the, than the leaves or the leaflets. So it's just kind of an interesting, um, I don't know what phenomenon. Um, one of the reasons you don't see yellowwoods planted more is because they are kind of an, a rare plant, kind of unusual. Uh, they do require a deeply, uh, very moist, and um, somewhat neutral soil. Um, they like it well drained. They are a very popular tree though where people know about them, but one of the things that you have to learn about, we have to go back and look at the trunk of the tree, and I have to show you one of their weaknesses. When, when you look at this tree, do you see anything that reminds you of another tree that's very Weak. Well, birch, maybe birch, but the pears. This guy um, must have learned how to how to branch from the the same book that the pears did. Um, it just sends up branches all too close together, um, and you can see that it has a bad propensity for what's called a weak crotch angle. That means that all these branches are just all growing up, and you get. When, when this tree gets really, really large, you get the weight of one side of the tree over here and the weight of another and the weight of another, and you get a little bit of ice or, or um, snow, and this side pulls against this side and they split. And that's what happens with the Bradford pear, and that's unfortunately what happens with this nice native yellowwood. So this tree in the right situation grows very quickly. It grows up to about 35 to 40 feet tall even though it's considered a small or a, or a medium-sized tree, it still gets up about 40 feet tall in the right situation. Um, it grows pretty fast, so when it's young, you really have to watch where all these branches are coming up and you have to do pruning on them, or else when this tree gets older, you'll probably have some splitting damage. But it is worth seeking out. It is a wonderful native tree. If you have a good soil situation with a little bit of shade, that's gonna be perfect for it. Um, and keep it well watered. Um, now this one is a good example of showing what's called a girdling root. How many of you all have ever heard of that? Oh, you have? Good. A lot of times, a lot of times people will call that a gurgling root, but it's really called a girdling root, which means when the, plant, when the tree was planted, um, the roots were not kind of spread out. So what happens is that the roots kind of encircle a tree, and that is basically going to choke the tree. Um, and eventually this tree will probably come down because these, these roots that are going all the way around are going to keep that buttress root or those root flare, those major roots that anchor the tree from, from growing properly. So it's going to be basically choked to death. And at some point, this tree will just blow over in a storm because those roots weren't allowed to form. So that's, that's again, the importance of, of finding that root flare. This one, the flare was found. You can see that. 
but there were just must have been some young roots that were just going in the wrong direction and eventually that's going to be a problem. Now it's not too late. An arborist could come in here and do some cutting of those roots and try to fix this. Um, and that's why you, you always want to hire a certified arborist and they will tell you it's a girdling root and they, if anybody call, comes up and says it's a gurgling root, call somebody else, okay? <laughs> Well, this one is going to be really hard to fix it now yeah. um, because what, what happened, it probably when it came or when, when it was started, they were trying to prune it to one central, it's better to try to prune things to a central leader or the more of an angle you can have on from your main trunk, uh, like a, a right angle is actually good, but the tighter that angle is, you really want to open that angle up. So they were probably okay on it until a young whippersnapper came up and just started growing below that and now he's taken over and now you've got this part here yeah because this now is half the tree now what about like i've seen people try to connect them now you can um cable it cable it. you could you can drill through here and drill through here and cable them and that's what a lot of times you'll do on a yellowwood tree when it gets so too old that. to prune and they probably will have to do that oh. or else this whole side of the tree will just snap off um, at some point. So, does anybody want this yellow wood? Oh, 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 she wants. Do you really want it? Okay, here you go. <laughs>